Jake's. Hello, hello, hello. It's Jake here, bringing you this month's PS4 roundup and feeling pretty excited, actually. The sun is finally peeking out and summer is on the horizon. So if you're at all like me, it means that while I sit indoors and play games for days on end, the windows can be open and it's going to be so fresh and lovely. Anyway, let's dive into this month's PS4 roundup. First up, we have the sixth installment in the mainstream Dead or Alive series. That's the mainstream series, not the pseudo-pornographic volleyball one, aptly named Dead or Alive 6. If you're not familiar with the series, Dead or Alive, or DOA as it's also known, is a series of fighting games where martial artists from all over the world compete in the Dead or Alive tournament. The games have a cult following and a huge community, but this latest instalment is supposed to be much more accessible to newcomers, using some new beginner-friendly mechanics and tutorial mode. They've also worked in some enhanced graphics and some visual upgrades like slow motion movements, sweat, blood and visible damage on the fighters, lots of lovely stuff like that. There's also a costume customization mode too, which is a first for this series. I'm yet to play a Dead or Alive game, but this one really caught my interest, so if you've played it already, let me know what you think. Another blockbuster released this month was Devil May Cry 5. It's set five years after the events of Devil May Cry 4, and you play as one of three playable characters as they cut a swathe through dozens of demons. These games are hack and slash mechanics, but pride themselves on stylish action, so you can expect lots of slick combos and visual style. The three characters wield a variety of weapons, attacks and techniques that make each one of them feel unique, and fun to play in their own way. There are plenty of enormous multiplayer experiences knocking around right now, so it's always a great treat to see a well-developed single-player experience come over the horizon. That's not to say it's without multiplayer features. If you have friends who are playing the game at the same time, then they can appear in your game from time to time, in what Capcom calls cameo guest appearances. I can't wait to get my hands on this. It's already sold over 2 million copies within two weeks of release, and it's been praised by critics, so this is definitely one you can't miss. Next up, we've got Tom Clancy's The Division 2, a highly anticipated sequel and AAA to the bone. Set seven months after the events of the first game, you play as a member of The Division, a task force who are responsible for helping to stabilize and rebuild Washington DC after the government, and largely all of society, collapses under a smallpox epidemic. Although it looks very Call of Duty, it's actually more of an RPG, with a level system, cool abilities, and a huge selection of firearms to collect. This shoot and loot style RPG kind of playing is probably best compared to games like Destiny 2 and Anthem, but with a very different aesthetic. The Division 2 has already received some great reviews and has the benefit of being released a while after Destiny 2 and Anthem, giving it a chance to sort of learn from the mistakes of those before it. Could easily be clickbait, but there are plenty of articles and YouTube videos calling this game a Destiny killer, so I guess only time will tell. Now this is the big boy this month, the one everyone's been talking about, Sekiro Shadows Die Twice. This game follows a shinobi, that's a fancy word for ninja in case you didn't know, called Sekiro as he gets his revenge on a samurai who attacked him and kidnapped his lord. It's a fully single player experience and it focuses entirely on the single player story. It seems to me that anything, anything connected with the Dark Souls and Bloodborne series is, is onto a winner. Sekiro is developed by From Software, the creator of both those aforementioned games, and the comparisons between those and Sekiro have been rife. But there is a lot about Sekiro that sets it apart from its brothers. For instance, there is no character creation and there isn't a huge library of spells and weapons. You're playing as Sekiro, warts and all, and the katana you start with will be your weapon for the whole game. This was a clear winner for most anticipated game of the month and that hype is thoroughly deserved. I know what you're thinking, Jake, you've done a roundup with no remasters. But never fear, I've snuck it in at the end. This month, the remastered version of Assassin's Creed 3 is being released. Assassin's Creed 3 was a great game, and Connor is one of my favourite protagonists from that series. I thought at first that it was far too early to be remastering Assassin's Creed 3, but that forced me to confront that that game has been out for seven years, and now I feel very old. If you didn't play this one, now's as good a time as any to take a chance to play it. Don't be afraid if you're not a big fan of this game series, as every Assassin's Creed game is loads of fun to play standalone too. So that's our roundup for March. What a lineup! Some really big studio games out this month. Which ones are you most excited about? 
Let us know in the comments below. And as always, for all the latest games and movies, visit us in store or at webuy.com. See you next time. Six.